is, and it'll actually be peaking toward week's end. Well, we see it. We could. Oh, this is right. where I come what in to give do you I the have details. To wake up? Do I don't have to wake up any earlier than I no, do, do I? You could probably get away with oh. waking up at the same time. Okay. Yeah, I think especially Friday morning okay. is when we're going to okay. have the best view of this. Mm, It'll Katie be Billinger bringing all kinds of goodies I today. I know. And when you see this graphic, you know what this reminds me of as we go full screen with the graphics? Can we? Can we? Wait for it's it. There it is. Goes. You know what this reminds me of? That shot in It's a Wonderful Life. Jim, tell me you've seen It's a Wonderful Life. I have life. seen It's okay, a Wonderful good. Life. But you know how the angels are talking amongst themselves oh, in the, in the okay. orbit. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's what this reminds me of. But this is actually a graphic all about the meteor shower. We were just talking about the Leonids are cool. taking place as we speak. And you're going to see the peak of this looking ahead to especially early Friday and into Saturday. But I think you'll get the best view on Friday specifically between the hours of about midnight and leading up to dawn. So that'll be when the sky is at its darkest. We also have a new moon coming up here. That helps to limit the moonlight, obviously. So uh, it'll be a really neat show if you are so inclined to brave the cold and go out and sit and take a look for this. So up to 10, if not 20 meteors per hour are likely with that. Now we've got two separate systems that we're talking about. We've been talking about these multiple fronts uh, throughout the show, and here's a look at them. The first of which looks kind of menacing. I don't think this is going to do much more than produce some scattered showers, which will get to, but then this one looks a heck of a lot more innocent than it's going to become in the days ahead. And that's the system that brings in the wet weather for the upcoming weekend. Again, we're going to get to that, but let's take a look at this guy right now bringing pounding rain around, uh, around a good portion of not just Western Ohio, Lower Michigan, all involved in this. And by the time this reaches us, we are pretty much well into the overnight hours. So even as of right now, most of us are still experiencing more blue sky than anything. Come 3, 4 p.m. though, the clouds are going to start to have built by this point. And it's really not until late tonight. Notice your timestamp until midnight 1 a.m. that the radar starts to become a little bit more lit up in terms of precip. So it's all pretty scattered and it will just be rain showers, even in the mountains. Our temperatures are likely to stay at worst into the upper 30s. So I don't anticipate that icing is at all a concern out of this. It's just a few wet roads heading into Thursday morning, and then it starts to clear out maybe just with a leftover sprinkle through the early afternoon, and then we're done, at least for the time being. But then we've got to watch the weekend. Duo of fronts comes along with this very intense storm system, bulk of its impact taking place to our north. But Saturday p.m. and toward nightfall especially, heavier rain is going to push through with the warm front, then the cold front sweeps through and in its wake, not only does the chill settle in, but the wind kicks in out of the northwest and you're also going to very likely see some snowflakes, especially true for the north and western counties outside of Philadelphia. This is also race day and our own Rahel is going to be running in the Philadelphia Marathon. So I know, so it looks like it's going to be a chilly one, my friend. I would layer up out there and if you're going to be going out to support Rahel or anybody else in the race, make sure that you're doing the same. The full marathon as of 7 a.m. Sunday, likely that we'll have maybe a shower around. We should be clearing out. I'm more concerned about the wind starting to pick up, though it should be at its worst after most folks have already crossed the finish line. It looks like the best forecast actually for the weekend as a whole happens for the 8K, of course, the shortest race, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, outside we go into the live neighborhood network. It's looking good right now. A couple of clouds certainly off in the distance here at Beach Patrol headquarters, but it's a quiet beginning to the afternoon. Nice light wind, a chill in the air, nothing atypical for November. However, we look forward. We're actually flirting with 60 tomorrow, not shabby, but the cold does does catch up to us. We're held back to just 50 come Friday, even despite the return of sun. And then again, that potent system comes along, really knocks the temperatures back. I'm sorry with this really poor timing for mm -hmm. Sunday, but I got faith in you. You're going to do great. And you know what, Katie? I have not gotten this far to let a little wind and cold get in my way. You said it. All right. Run, Rahel, <laughs> run. You put that pavement. <laughs>